sky watchers and astronomy enthusiasts have something exciting to look forward to about a month after the total lunar eclipse will be the ring of fire solar eclipse. So could you tell me a little bit about what that means? Yeah, well, first, what's cool is that um, we were just talking about the lunar eclipse and most people might not realize that these eclipses chase each other. You get lunar eclipses and solar eclipses back to back. And the reason for that is that the Earth, the moon going around the Earth in its not perfectly circular, but near perfectly circular orbit, when it's lined up, um, so it's, it's, it's kind of off the plane of the Earth-Sun, the mm -hmm. Earth-Sun system by about five degrees, which is why we don't get total lunar and total solar eclipses every month. But when you do get a total lunar eclipse, you've got a total solar eclipse on its way too, because it means that the system has come into alignment. And, you know, 14 days or whatever it is after a total lunar eclipse, you're still lined up. Now, in this case, as it's going around, the moon is a little bit too far away from the earth. So it doesn't completely cover the sun. Instead of like, if everybody remembers the 2017 eclipse, which got everybody all hyped up because it was the great American eclipse. It crossed North America from our Western side to our Eastern side. That was a position of the moon where it was close enough that it was the same size in the sky as the sun. But in this case, the moon, unlike the super moon aspect, this is the opposite. It's at its farther approach from Earth. So it doesn't completely cover the sun from our perspective. It covers a lot of it. It covers enough of it that you end up with this effect that there'd be a black dot with a with with the rest of the sun shining around it, which ends up looking like a ring of fire, which is why we end up calling it the ring of fire eclipse or an annular um, solar eclipse. So, and this one's kind of cool because it, um, the way the shadow of the moon is gonna pass over the earth is, is gonna pass over the North Pole. And that's kind of a rare occasion for it to cross the pole. But it's an exciting one for people on the northern, uh, on the northeast of the United States. You know, people in New York, people even from as far south as like North Carolina, I think, can catch wow. something. All the way up to Maine, you know, the whole north or northeastern seaboard there from like mid, the, the mid south up, will be able to catch this event. And it's a sunrise eclipse for us a sunrise partial eclipse so the, the the sun will be rising while partially eclipsed those of us in new york it'll be about 72 or 73 percent eclipsed as it rises and so that's another cool thing right because the sun sunrises are always fun to watch sunsets maybe more so because who likes to get up early really but a sunrise also means that the sun is going to be low on the horizon and you'll get it like rising partially eclipsed and as it rises it's close to the horizon so you can see it with buildings or with trees or whatever it is make sure you have a clear view of it uh, but that's that's like a fun that's fun so cool. thing you can wake up in the morning go outside look at the sun and it is not going to look like your regular sun you have to wear your eclipse viewing glasses and all the things to be safe but you will notice that it looks like the Death Star is in front of the sun as it's rising. And uh, so that is a neat, neat um, kind of eclipse to watch. We, for, for those of us in the United States, we don't get the full eclipse. You have to go into northern parts of Canada and then out towards, the, um, towards Greenland and the northern part of the, the world to actually see it. But for them, they'll actually get to the, the equivalent of a totality where the the moon covers enough so you get a ring of fire. So it'll be a perfect, a perfect ring. But It'll I mean, people in New York ring. are gonna wake up to see the Death Star covering the sun as it rises over the city. I think you that's still pretty cool. Yeah, you got it, right. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned eclipse viewing glasses. Uh, and I know that we we talked about the total lunar eclipse recently and you know, looking at the moon is a pretty safe thing, but obviously looking at the sun even an eclipsed sun is pretty dangerous. So 
Yes, very yes. dangerous. Could you tell me a little bit about kind of what it takes to like properly and safely view a solar eclipse? Yeah, I mean, uh, the eclipse sun is still as dangerous to your eye. A partially eclipsed sun is as dangerous to your eye as um, as the non eclipse sun uh, because the sun has enormous amount of radiation that's coming towards you. So the the safest way to watch is with the what we, the eclipse viewing glasses that have a um, that can block out the majority of the light from the sun. Mm -hmm. And there's recommendations from the American Astronomical Society that you can recommend to your readers that we, we um, the members of the American Astronomical Society after the 2017 eclipse, because so many people were asking that question, they wanted to be able to safely watch it. What do you do? We created a list of vendors where you could buy glasses from where you would be able to safely look at it. I mean, it's like heavy mylar, but don't use mylar. Like you have, there's a certification that you should look for, for the kind of thing you're going to use. Welder's glasses, for instance, will have it. Um, and, and that is how you can safely look. If you don't want to look at the sun, you could always cast the shadow of the sun down onto something and look at, at its reflection and you'll see like the chunk of the sun taken out by the moon as you see the shadow of it on the ground or on a piece of paper or whatever you use to reflect the sun's light down. But eclipse viewing glasses, people might have them left over from 2017. True. And even if they don't, you can get a new pair. Definitely. I, I imagine trying to photograph a solar eclipse is also pretty tricky. Photographing any eclipse seems pretty tricky. It's tricky, but it is an ambitious, but I highly recommend it. I highly recommend trying it. And for that, you also want to put a safe filter over your camera lens, which you can also do. You can get nice filters to go over your camera lenses. You can even get very safe Mylar paper that you could wrap your lens in if you want a cheaper approach to it. Just look up to make sure that it's certified so that you can safely put it over your lens and then look through it and take the picture. Yeah, um, there's lots on this. And I would suggest that this partial eclipse is a cool one to try and do some astrophotography of, because I bet you could get some good composite pictures of the horizon since the sun is low on the ground. It's it's a rising eclipse for us, for those of us in North America. It's very exciting. Yeah, e even without totality, it seems like it's going to be a really visually pretty incredible event. Yeah. And it's, you know, sunrise is always a fun time of the day, whether you're a morning person or not. It is the beginning of our circadian rhythm on the planet. And uh, it's starting out with a boom on June 10th. It's starting out with a 70% um, eclipsed, partially eclipsed sun for us here in the New York City area. So it's a, that's, that's, that's not your everyday experience. And um, so kicking off sunrise with something like that is a cool thing. Definitely. Now, when we spoke about the lunar eclipse, you suggested as tips and tricks for families watching at home to most importantly have patience find a good place to sit and bring snacks. Are those also tips and tricks you would recommend for a solar eclipse? Well, in this case, the patience isn't as much of a one that I have to give because it happens fairly quickly in the sense that for, for those of us that are in North America, you only have an hour to watch it. And in this case, my advice is go to bed early because you have to get up early. So you should get up earlier than when it's going to happen to make sure you've got your spot laid out and then check out the weather. Cause I'll tell you the thing that ruins a good eclipse is a cloud <laughs> because <laughs> a cloud will just cover the sun and you will have no idea that anything is happening. So check out the weather. So you're not disappointed. I mean, some people really chase this kind of thing and look to make sure that they're not going to be, you know, um, in a place where it's definitely overcast and it's going to rain that morning. So if you want to get into the micro level of planning yourself a solar eclipse, keep an eye on the weather 